nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Oh man, I just cannot win with the lighting on this project. Sorry, it's so dark. I try and pick fabrics that aren't gonna be this dark. Um, and uh, you just never know when you're shopping, right? So um, this one will be lightened too before we get to the sewing. I just didn't wanna blind you with my pattern. How are you all? Happy Saturday. <laughs> Also, I had my hair done and it, I had a headache before I even got halfway to work, so I just took it out. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Aisha. Hi, Anna. Hi, Shem. Hey, BJ. Hey, Anna. Hey, Diane. Hey, Julie. Nice to see you. Nice to see you all. Are you guys sewing today or this weekend? What are you guys doing? What's your plans this weekend for sewing? Or maybe creating something else. I don't know. I guess we're past Valentine's. So, you know, people aren't like furiously making little Valentine's for their students or their kids classmates. Yeah. Right. And my hair literally has to dry in the hairstyle. Otherwise I get a headache. I just, I just, that's why you don't hardly ever see me wear my hair up. So hi, Deborah. Welcome. Oh, nice. Aisha. That's so smart. I need to do more of that. I mean, I have plenty of binding, so I guess I don't need to create more, but it, it is nice to just use up some pieces for that, you know? You're working, Julie? Me too. <laughs> You're working on the next nightgown <clears throat> and trying to make time to keep up with the scraps I'm creating from the nightgowns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is a, a part-time job, like, you know, managing the scraps. I made a ton of mulch mats with my scrap bin when I did my little studio remodel. I can get rid of an entire bin now in an hour or less. And as soon as I get home, there's plenty of places to put them. And it's just been so great for our yard. And they just, they don't even look weird out there. I know people are like, oh, that was like weird. But God, you know, like weeds, weeds really don't look good. <laughs> And neither does a wilting plant, you know. And, uh, you know, we've all had that um, that weed cloth that is um, looking pretty tattered. So these look good. I'm happy with them. They're sewing dog toys. Oh, that's fun. I have a whole little drawer over there, like a little tiny drawer in my tool thingy of squeakers. But we, we have to remove the squeakers from our toys now because we had a very, very expensive... Um, incident with one you're sewing working on a peekaboo pattern can get several patterns hi louisa how's it going it's interestingly my dogs haven't played much with the hedgehog i made them in december I, granted i haven't really played with them with it you know so hi Marlon. how's it going oh interesting shim yeah that's a very old technique that's actually what I did with one of my mulch mats. I used cheesecloth. They look really cool. It's, 
Or organza would be so much easier to use though. I just didn't have that, I had cheesecloth. Hi Eliza, how's it going? Yeah, exactly, a lot of quilters do that. Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's, not, it's not new, but it's very cool. Sometimes it turns, it makes really unexpected results, which is um, kind of partly the beauty of it. Yeah, zip pouches, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think my favorite, my favorite and fastest mulch mat thing now, if I'm making them for potted plants, what I do is I take a piece of fabric and then um, I take all the little pieces of scraps and um, if they're bigger, I kind of shred them a tiny bit. I don't make tiny, tiny pieces, I don't need to. I don't want them to break down really fast. And I just, sit there and put them on the piece of fabric and just sew straight over them and I just keep feeding it in there and then go back to the top and go down and I just keep going. I can do a lot of those. And so some of the fabric I've used is the stuff that's photorealistic. So I took photos of the ground in my yard and then printed it on fabric. And then, um, so when it's sitting in the little potted plant, it just looks like soil. Like you would really have to, it's, it's obvious it's not real, but you, your eye doesn't go right to it because it's not really colorful. So it's, it's, a, it's been really great. Like I've cut down on my watering down to a quarter of what I was watering before. So it works. Yeah, exactly, Eliza. I've heard of that too. Wash away stabilizers and quilt it and wash it. Exactly. Oh, interesting, Malin. Now that sounds really cool. <laughs> that sounds really cool any way to use them, right? And organza is so, it's so nice. Like it's so nice to sew on, especially if you have a little bit of substance behind it. I bet it looks gorgeous. It's really cool. All right, let's, let's get sewing. I was kind of all over the place on Thursday. I'm still feeling a little all over the place. Yeah, right, Shem, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like some of my mulch mats, uh, the, the ones for potted plants, I have them sitting I have rolled them up and just put them by the door so that I have them at any moment. And they look really cool because they're, on one side it looks like a rag rug. Like it, you could literally make rag rugs doing that. <laughs> you know, like it just looks like rag rugs. And on the other side, it looks like uh, the ground. <laughs> they're such a strange juxtaposition. <laughs> I wish I would have finished that video, but for some reason my computer hated this moment in my video and I was like seven eighths of the way done in that video and for some reason I added a clip like all the other clips I had added and for some reason my computer crashes right there at that spot every time I go to edit and so I just got sick of it and I just thought um, you know what this is just not meant to be and um, it people aren't going to watch this and they don't care so that's that's what's the mulch mat fairy is telling me right now. <laughs> So yeah, they were for me, Mullen. I've definitely had some comments that weren't so kind on Instagram. I'm like, whatever, you don't have to make them. You're not living in a desert like I am. I mean, it's not technically a desert, but it is. I need to shut my, I need to shut my door. I just realized that it's open. Nobody's here, but you just never know. I don't want to be that neighbor. <laughs> so yeah. They're great, and my husband asks for them, you know? It's like, oh, can you put, uh, can you make some and put them around that little tree out there? I'm having to water it every other day right now. And then once it's around a tree, the other stuff that's growing around, it just kind of covers it up, you know? And they get dirty, so they start blending in. This is my, like, plat this is my, like, pedestal. Mulch mats forever. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's do this. So uh, this is part two. This is my pretty much my last installment of using this quilted knit fabric that I got from Minerva. And it's linked in the description. It's really cool. They gifted this to me as a ambassador. So I can do whatever I want with, with the fabrics they give me. Um, and really the only ask from them is that I post it on their website. So that's why you're not seeing like heavily sponsor heavy like graphics on my stream because they don't really care about this part so much. So um, yeah, anyway, let's lighten it up a little bit. 
I like I like doing their thing. I have only done like a few projects with them just because, well, I'm not slow, but I have other things to do, I guess. I don't know. I really should take advantage of it more. That's not too bad. I'm gonna leave it there for now. I really want a lighten and darken button. Okay. So where we left off last time is um, I've got the pockets on both legs. So uh, the front and the back are assembled at the out seam only. We have our pedal hem ready to assemble. It's, it's all bound here. And so right now we're at the side seam. So I'm gonna sew the side seams together and then do the waistband. So we're actually, I should have set my camera up right away for the serger, because that's what we're gonna do next. And I think that, um, oh, I know Shem exactly. Yeah, I don't think they'd get moldy and that would be okay. They're there to like, I mean, certain molds are good. It's not like a, uh, I don't think that it would get moldy. I mean, it's fabric. It would probably mildew. Yeah, exactly. I know, I, I, it's, it's, when people say that, I'm just like, like I, I had someone recently say, uh, what was the picture of, what did I sew recently? Oh, it was the, um, the little cardigan I did, the Lisbon cardigan by Itch to Stitch, and I sewed it as part of Vlogmas. I actually wore that thing yesterday. I love that sweater knit. Shout out to Amy Sheridan for telling me to go to Style Maker Fabrics for that, because <laughs> that is the coziest, lightweight knit. I love it. And that little cardigan I love. Um, and um, I put on these buttons that were made by Pigeon Wishes, which is an indie uh, like a, you know, someone making a living doing this, right? Like she makes buttons in the UK and I ordered them from her and they were really cool. They're confetti buttons and she does all kinds. And that's what I put on the cardigan. It actually makes it look a little bit less old lady like. <laughs> and the person commented, well, I wouldn't have used the backside of the, the shell buttons like that. It would look way better if the buttons were flipped over. And I was like, First of all, I didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> Second of all, I was like, well, these are actually handmade buttons by Pigeon Wishes and they're gorgeous. <laughs> I'm sorry, the photo doesn't show them like that. So, and then Pigeon Wishes followed me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, why would you say something? It's kind of, it's just like, this, I was not asking your opinion. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I'm just thinking like, do I, maybe I'll, what I'm going to do is get the waistband ready to get, go together. And then we could do the serger stuff all at the same time. So we're not f switching back and forth. Um, I could tack this to, you know, actually tacking this together in a few places might be a smart idea. We could just do that. Cause I could match some of these stitch lines like this. And then I can get rid of my pins for the serger. Yeah, people are strange. I never worry about calling people out either because I'm sure most people on Instagram don't even know I'm on YouTube. I'll bet my content on there is actually really confusing because it's just like, here's my makes. Like, who asked you, lady? <laughs> you know, so um, the, it's it's to them, it's not the result of like, oh, we watched you make this and we've been wondering, you know, like what happened and how does it fit? All right, so I'm just going to tack this in a few places. I can tell I'm procrastinating doing the camera. So that's an issue. I have to think about that. I don't want to buy a new computer. I don't want to buy one. I have, I can, I could afford it. I don't want to do that. Like, cause then I have a, yet another computer. Although my husband just took my old one, which is great. Now he has a computer to deal with. Okay, so we have this uh, matching and matching and see now this will be ready to do the pedal hem. So, right, cool, that's, that's cool. And we're gonna do the um, waistband too. I have this one, um, 
just kind of clipped as well. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Yeah, right, Kira? I know, it does. It's just, uh, I think especially if you're gonna use the serger and you prefer having a lot of pins or maybe your project requires a lot of stuff, tacking it with the machine is just, it's really nice. Like, you know that's not gonna shift. And you can even check the tacking and go, oh, I didn't tack that very well, you know? I didn't tack that very well. <laughs> okay. So thanks for all the help with the, um, the video idea I needed the other day. Um, you guys will all laugh when you find out that I searched their website and they don't carry my all. They carry four different other awls. One curved, um, which I've tried and it was eh, like, I just couldn't get the, it just didn't work for me. It's great, but they had a, um, and then the other awls were meant to puncture holes. So the diameter was a little bit big. And then another one was a um, stiletto, which is a little too sharp. And so then I was like, great. I can't do a whole video about how I bind something, like binding tips using an awl if they don't even sell the awl. Not that they were gonna use my video, but I just wanted to kind of, you know. And so then I went right back into the rabbit hole of, I don't know what to do. So I ended up doing a video of like, um, like, like fundamental helpful tips. Cause I think it was Kira was like, I would like more beginning tips. And I was like, oh, this is actually kind of a good one. So one of them was, so I took, I, I made a miniature, do I have it? Oh yeah, yeah, look, here it is. It's really cute. I made a miniature little um, neckline. And so I, the three tips were sewing your shoulder. I had to remember <laughs> sewing your shoulders, like sewing, sewing she, seams, sewing seams together that are lined up on the seam line, which sounds so basic, but so many people do this, even advanced sewists just don't line up their seams um, correctly and then it's off, right? Um, and you know, you don't want a jog right there. The other tip was clipping your neckline, ironing it before you understitch it. So ironing it so that all your little clips are splayed out like they're gonna be, sorry, this is so bright. Um, and then understitching it so you get the maximum because look at how nice that is. And then the last tip was stitching in the ditch at the shoulders to secure the facing. And I did that all in like eight minutes and I haven't even edited it yet. So anyway, um, that's where I landed. I'll show you guys the video in the guild when it's done. So. I know I'm so close to hitting 10,000 followers on Instagram. It's so funny. I'm like a hundred people away. It's been like that for like two months, Shim. <laughs> two months, like I feel like uh, I've gotten like 50 followers. I don't push it though. Like I'm not gonna be like, follow me, you know. They do custom fabric too, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, all right. I guess I just feel like chatting with you guys lately. <laughs> okay so we have these tacked and now we're going to i don't want to make this too bright so i'm going to leave this on the screen so we're going to make a waistband with a draw cord and an elastic and um, i think what i'm going to do i have i'm going to do spanish sn spanish snap buttonholes and uh, I interfaced a little piece of fabric here to use. And so uh, that's basically a facing instead of a buttonhole. So, so you guys were requesting that, so I decided to do that. So I'm gonna fold one waistband in half. I'm just finding the center, nothing fancy. And then we're gonna fo fold it. We need it to be accurate though. I thought I was folding the right one. Let's move this one out of the way so we can see. Thanks, Kira. Good. I mean, it, they didn't ask for it, so I just feel like it's neutral enough, you know? And it gave me the opportunity to show an overhead camera, um, explain something in my style. 
And the whole thing really didn't take long. If I have an idea, it doesn't take long. I was just listening to this great video by these YouTubers and they were like, it's not the content that takes a long time. It's finding the ideas. And I'm like, oh, I can relate to that sometimes. This is kind of buckling, so I'm just smoothing it out there. All right, so let's, uh, why did I do that? That's not what I wanted to do. You guys are distracting me. <laughs> Kara, thanks. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> thanks, though. That's funny. Okay, so I'm just folding it backwards, or I mean in half and in half. In half, uh, so I find the center front, and in half, so I find the top edge there, which is like right here, right? We'll just use some chalk today. Something like that. And then now we have the top of our waistband. So this is the center and the top of our waistband. And now we just need to locate our buttonhole. So we're gonna put the seam allowance on here. You could eyeball this, but you know, it's pretty easy to figure it out. We want our buttonholes to be about three quarters inch of a part away from each other. So we're gonna put a three eighths inch line away from the center here. And then that's where our buttonhole is going to go. And then now we can find the center here if we want and put our, our buttonhole on above and below that point right there. And then we know what our draw cord is going to be. And so our draw cord, we'll give ourselves a half inch. Half inch? Yeah, half inch. We're going to give ourselves a half inch buttonhole. So there we go. This is a Chaco liner by Clover. I, I really, I have like a love, not hate, but a love um, um, our relationship with this guy because it is one of my absolute favorite things to mark with. Uh, maybe you can see, it's very, very precise. Maybe you can even see, I don't know, the gray really blends in. You see that? It's a very precise little thing. It's so easy to use. And here's the problem with, I don't feel like it always washes out. White and gray, I haven't noticed. I'd stay away from yellow. Stay away from yellow because I still have buttonholes that have yellow. All right, and so now we need to mark the other side. So we're just gonna put a pin in like this. And a pin in like this. transfer it to the side. We're not doing anything fancy. This is probably why I can never get two buttonholes perfectly um, the same size across from one another. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Kara, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love it because it's so precise. It's so fast. It's so um, satisfying, you know. Oops, I put that on the wrong side here. We need to un we needed to unfold it before we did that. So just fold it there. Again, we're going to clip our center while we're here. I'm doing this the clunkiest way possible, sorry. It's not a tutorial. <laughs> yeah, is it, so you haven't ha run into the, the white and gray haven't being a problem either? Because that's good to know, you know, because uh, that is what I worry about. We'll just draw a three quarters of an inch line away and we'll just make sure that it's the same. We can just measure it one and three eighths plus up right there. And then this one, we want to do a little bit more than a half inch. There we go. So now we have two buttonholes. And then we have our little piece of fabric here. By now I could have gotten my home machine out and done two buttonholes. <laughs> okay, we have this. We need two pieces. All right, and so we should, I should have interfaced this. So let's go do that really quick. Oh, 
I'm reading chat. Thread tracing, Taylor said, yeah. <laughs> get a little piece of fabric or interfacing right here. I should just keep these little scraps over by my, um, my iron because it seems like that's where I use them the most. Yeah, I really did this in the clunkiest way possible. This is the wrong side of the fabric. So of course, uh, now I need to, re I'm gonna have to redo all this. So I'm just gonna do a um, dry iron. So I can still see my markings. did th thread tracing recently and then I was like who am I <laughs> all right so um <laughs> I'm trying to decide oh <laughs> I really should have just Marked it a different way, but it's okay. I can see my chalked, so you know I'm not doing some sort of mystery thing here. You have to do these individually. Like I can't just put one big piece of fabric over this because it, each one needs to turn through the, the hole. That's why. So, in fact, what we could do is we'll stick this on here like this. We're gonna pin this above and below the, where those little pins are. We'll do this one while we're at it. Like this. Can you tell I do this a lot? Not really. That's why I'm so clunky at it right now. All right, now we're gonna pin these through. Straight down. all this just for a marking on this side. Like. Okay, finally, we're ready. I can actually see the line of that print of the fabric through the interfacing, which is actually kind of helpful. All right, now we're going to all that. I'm gonna put my stitch length down pretty short. We're doing a knit, it's not ideal. And basically I'm gonna sew a hole like this. I'm gonna go in two arcs. I say it, don't you? I don't say I don't use pins. <laughs> Lots of people comment I don't use pins. I use pins. I'm gonna do one back stitch. I'm gonna sew a little bit where I started. Can you even see that? 
Looks like a, an eye. Yeah, right, Kira, I totally agree with you. I can tell if I'm rushing something sometimes. The reason is because I want it to be done. Sometimes it's just because I need it fast. All right, let's uh, turn and press. Let's see how they came out. What'd you do, Terry? You deep clean your kitchen. Oh, nice. Okay. We've been going through my husband's grandmother's things. Um, she just passed away and she was nine, uh, 98, almost 99. <laughs> uh, she came over on the Berlin airlift um, from Germany. And we're discovering like there's definitely things we didn't know about her that she just was never very talkative about things. And if you asked her, she'd be like, bah. <laughs> but gosh, you know, some of the photos she has and like we found all of her papers from when she came over. It's been really interesting. Yeah, I'm doing a pretty bad demonstration of it, but it is in the, the buttonhole SBS. I do a little better job of that one, basically, because I prepared for it. I'm just kind of doing the slit and making sure it's down there in the in the point there. One tip I'll give, and I didn't really do this just now, is when I'm doing something like that, like the bottom of a placket right there, um, and it comes to a point, it's smart to not sew it so that it comes to a point. It's smart to sew it so that you have one stitch going across that point. It seems like what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna get a nice point there, but you, you'll get a better point if you go across. So sometimes you just gotta try things that are not intuitive, you know? Just to get something in that. The reason I do that is so that it reinforces that high stress part. Because sometimes what happens is it gets really frayed right there. All right, and so the snap part of this is you're supposed to go like that and it goes snap. And that's it. Yeah, it's been really interesting, Terry. I wish, I feel like all it's done is give us more questions than answers because we're just like, why didn't she ever mention this, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. She's a retired librarian from a university, a big university. Um, I didn't know till now that she also spoke fluent French. German was her first language and English and French her others. All right, let's go to the... She was, she had a really intense personality. <laughs> That's my, my uh, kind way of putting it. <laughs> But um, I would have liked to know more, you know. Her her uh, brother died in the war. There we go. Except for that little crease I just put in there. There we go. There's my... So I think, like... I'm not sure. I, now I'm, I'm kind of questioning, was this a good choice? Maybe I shouldn't have made the width of them so pronounced. We're just talking about a draw cord here. So when this is all said and done, let's just think about it. When it's all said and done, this is my way of making myself feel better about using this style, right? Because I, I like to do that. I like to, I call them backup plans, right? It's like, okay, if I don't like this, what's, what's my next option? Or is it that bad, right? It's kind of that kind of game. So I think that's kind of wide. If this had been a real button going in here, this would be really helpful um, to have this kind of 
width across it. Um, I overdid it. They're also not very symmetrical. I told you I wouldn't be. <laughs> but when this is down, like when we put the other side down, and then remember there's also gonna be elastic in there, and then the draw cord is gonna come out of this hole here, you're really not gonna see it. This is how I console myself, right? So, but they will work really well. And we know how reinforced they are, so. Yeah, like eyelets, I feel like, eyelets are great, but you have to have the right diameter. And stuff can go sideways with those sometimes, depending on the fabric you're using, so. All right, let's uh, sew my waistband together. You know what I did find in her um, possession? Well, not, I didn't find in her possessions. You know, we're going through all kinds of things. We've moved her uh, twice. So we already had some of her things. We just had them in boxes. We weren't like using them or anything. Um, and uh, I found this pottery, these two little dishes. And I was like, these are so cute. So she was a big traveler. She traveled like a big traveler, like every September, she would leave for almost a month every year and go back to Europe or to Russia or all over the world. Like she'd been everywhere. And so a lot of her little knickknacks I knew weren't just knickknacks. They were things from her travels, you know, they looked very knickknacky in some cases, but in others you're like, this was handmade somewhere. You can tell it was, she bought from an artisan. She, she appreciated things, she loved opera. And um, so she had these two little dishes are like this big and about this deep. And I kept looking at those going, those are, those are different. Those look really cool. The colors that are pick, were picked for the painting on them and everything. And so I finally like just looked up the name on the back of it and I didn't get it quite right. Welcome Diana, did someone just subscribe? Thanks for subscribing. I'm just nattering on. This is what a live stream is like here. But um, apparently the, uh, the potter or ceramicist uh, was Italian and his like big heyday was in the 70s. Um, and his name was Vicenzo, Vicenzo, uh, Vicenzo, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Pietra, wait, no, uh, Viet, Vietri. V-I-E-T-R-I, -I. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember what it looked like it said and what it ended up being. Like I just, um, oh, his name is Vicen Vicenzo Pinto from Vietri, that's what it was. And uh, there's still people collecting his pottery. I just almost put that right and wrong sides together. So that was kind of cool to see some of his stuff. And, um, I, like, when did she get it? Where did she get it? Why did she get it? Did she meet the person? Was she just at a knick-knack tourist shop? You know, like that's the kind of things like I'm kind of curious about, you know? Oh, let's change my stitch length back up to a respectable amount. And there's quite a few things like that in her possessions, these little things, you know, so. I'm kind of a weirdo about possessions. Like I feel like I've been working since I was 20 years old to get rid of every single thing I own so nobody has to deal with anything when I die. <laughs> Except my sewing stuff. They're gonna be hosed there. They're gonna have a lot to deal with. <laughs> All right. Um, see, look at that. Straight stitch, very stretchy still. But I am kind of thinking like, do I want to get rid of this, all this seam allowance or part of me just wants to stitch it down so that it's not in the way when I do. Oh, but the elastic, we're not going to thread the elastic through. We're only threading through the um, draw cord. All right. Here's my elastic. No <laughs> Spanish dust cleaning for me. Exactly. I just, I don't know. I have a funny thing about it. I don't want someone to have to deal with it. I don't know why. I've been thinking about this for so long. I, why? I don't know. All right, so we'll secure our elastic in there. And then um, 
We could put our draw cord in there now too. It would be kind of nice not to thread it through, I have to admit. Oh, let's do our, um, we can do our draw cord right now. Let's put it together. <laughs> My mom feels the same way, Terry. <laughs> that, that's so funny because my mom, um, like before the fire, she, I think I've told you guys this, she had this book and it was photos of all of the things that she had. Like she collected antiques since I, I you know, since I was a baby, she's collected antiques. This is, a, this is plenty long. And um, she wanted someone to know like what was the story of this antique where did it come from what did she know about it um and um you know what year it was what it was made from this was before antiques roadshow my mom was literally like keeping an antiques roadshow reminder <laughs> so um yeah more is more <laughs> It was a beautiful, that's so nice, Terry. I like that you enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, and my husband found a box that he's pretty sure his grandfather had made, which has been pretty cool, you know? It's a wooden box. Why is this not like, well, we'll just tape it down, but. All right, let's see if I, uh, This fabric wasn't the greatest to use on the binding attachment, so we're just gonna try it. Let's see, it's a little too um, loosely woven. Let's back it up a little bit, see if we can get all of it. Now we're losing some of it here. There we go. Doesn't it feel different today, this thing? We're gonna slide it over a little more. I find you don't want this little edge to be too close to the needle because then this little edge for my presser foot, it, it gets stuck between the toes. But I don't want it to be too far over because then the stitching goes down the middle. See, it's already going down the middle of the binding. So it's kind of a... a trickier thing to get how I want. <laughs> exactly. I think like right now, the way I feel about it um, sometimes is we've already had to absorb two people's things and I feel like it sometimes takes away some of your choices of the things you want to have in your home because I don't want to not have these things. They're cool and they are a part of our family. So I like that. No, no, you are not doing. Did you see that? Wow. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna move this screw over here. Maybe this is what is wrong right now. I've never had it happen. that happen. It's sewing so well right now. I'm, a, I'm just moving the screw over. There's two holes. I'm gonna move it to the left one. I think that'll stabilize the bracket here, flusher with the bed of the machine. Oh yeah, that feels better. But it's, there's something about it today. It feels like it's, maybe it's the fabric. Oh shoot, I just fell off a bit because I'm fiddling with it. Maybe it's the fabric. There we go, this feels a lot better. All right, for the one person out there who has this, use the screw on the left. <laughs> there we go, there's my draw cord. Where's that little spot we saw? 
or that I had, um, not saw, but. Oh, maybe it was because I was going over a seam. This thing, this one goes over seam so much nicer than my one that was permanently installed, so. Yeah, that's me and my husband, Eliza. I'm the minimalist and he's not. He's very, he's sentimental, and keeps things. The joke with me and my husband is that, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I feel like if you're here today in the stream, you're not here to see how these are sewn together because they're, I drafted them. So I'm being really chatty. I know I'm gonna get that one person like, thank you talk too much. But um, you don't have to watch if you don't want. <laughs> but um, so when my husband and I met each other, um, he would sometimes like bring me a little snack or a treat, you know, from the goodie counter at the co-op, which had these amazing goodies. And so, which like, that's my love language, one of them, you know? And I would do the same thing for him. Like I would give him a bagel and cream cheese cause it was near lunchtime or um, a little cherry turnover or whatever, right? So when I, we were moving in together, <laughs> I was helping him move and I found this box and on top of the box was all these little goodies in the wrappers that I gave him in, right? And so um, <laughs> he, he was basically like being super gracious and polite and like, oh, thanks, that's so nice of you. I'll, I'll have this in a little bit. And then he wouldn't eat it because he was full and he just eats like a mouse. And so um, I found these petrified, uh, you know, like, a bagel and cream cheese and like three different goodies in the little like paper sleeve. And so that's the joke every time. And every time he's moved from a job, he packs up the office, moves, you know, leaves the place of employment, never unpacks the boxes from the office. And so he has like a time capsule of every time he's left a job. And I'm always like, you know, like what petrified treats are in there? And it happened again. Like I helped him move out of an office once and there was a petrified treat in there. So anyway, um, you, yeah, it wasn't welded in place, Terry. It was that you had to change out the throat plate and the feed dogs because it was a split feed dog. Oh, that's great, Shim, I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to put this inside my waistband. We'll put this at the back. Just like this. So. This is a little fiddly, right? Because you need it to be inside there. Oh, but let's do our waist, our draw cord at the same time. This is gonna be, I don't know if this is worth it or not, but let's just try it. All right. Okay. Yeah, the feed dogs are split. No, the feed, it, it's not split. I'm sorry, it's a split foot, but it's also the feed dogs were, um, they, it looks, this is the only thing I didn't clean, of course. I think I might have one in here. Let me show show you. So like it's a half of a feed dog. No, that's not it. Oh, I thought that was it. This is my graveyard of things. Look at how many bobbin cases I have. <laughs> Bob, look, see, remember I've told you guys that you don't need that little spring in there. You can just use a little piece of binding. My mechanic did that. <laughs> bobbin cases, these are brand new. These are brand new. They still have, no, maybe not. Yeah, 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 these are brand new. These are not brand new. Um, yeah, sorry, Carrie, Terry. I thought I had a, uh, ooh, can I use this for my feed dog? I mean, my, uh, my uh, foot. Look at all my throat plates. I've shown you guys these before. When you're a really busy sewer, you go through throat plates and so you get the little hole where the needle goes in, it gets barbed right there. 
Look at that one. This one's really chewed up. It's so chewed up that it started to split in the front right there. This was my favorite one because it was green, but look at how barbed that hole is. It's that little hole. So what, then the thread, you know, going, passing through that hole there, it will, um, it will start cutting your thread. So, so that's it. All right, let me just, I'll let you guys talk while I stop talking. <laughs> All right, so we've got our, we're just gonna match all this up. We're just gonna slip all this in here. And it's gonna get, it's gonna get fiddly because the elastic will most likely be smaller than the opening, it better be. Hopefully my waist is smaller than this. I'm not sure anymore. Some things like that, if they're not like valuable, but they're sentimental, I will make into other things like plant pots and stuff like that. <laughs> Or like ceramics. My daughter made a lot of ceramics when she was a kid. And they're like, you know, like a kid painted a cat, you know. So it, no one's going to want that at a thrift store either. And so I just put them out in the yard. Um, I don't know, Diane. I... I I don't know, it was, it's just kind of one of those weird things where every time the mechanic would come and he would swap it out, or I would order one and swap it out, I would just throw it in the, the, like, the parts bin, and that the parts bin wasn't that bag for a long time, it was my drawer right here. And my drawer, see my drawer here is now has three layers of bobbins. Before, it didn't really have that many bobbins. We didn't use that many thread colors, but now that I'm sewing with you guys, I have a lot more thread colors. So that took up a lot more space in my drawer. And so I finally got rid of some of that stuff and I just threw it in that bag. So it's just one of those things where, you know, like you don't realize it's been 10 years since you haven't touched something and that's just how it is. And uh, it was just kind of a joke that my throat plate, plate collection, because like, Ryan never went through throat plates. <laughs> I went through throat plates. I, I went through a lot of them, but she never did. So it was just one of those funny things that uh, differentiated our sewing styles. <laughs> but I did all the heavy duty stuff, that's why. So when you're doing a lot of heavy duty sewing, you know, like uh, junctures with stiffener and binding and stuff like that, it's gonna move your needle. Your needle's gonna do this occasionally. You don't want it to, but it does. And that's when you get those um, chips in your throat plate. Like this throat plate is the original one and it's still pretty pristine. You get a lot of chips in your throat plate and then, yeah, so it just happens. Okay, so we have this all. Let's just uh, sew it together with this, the, the sewing, the single needle machine, you know? Ah, a little waffle iron. That would be kind of a fun thing. So I'm just matching my centers and my side seams. And uh, right now, I'm just tacking the raw edges together. So see how there's all this slack right here? What I could do to make this easier is just slide this along right here. And we'll just try and keep it on track so when it's at the side seams, everything is still copacetic. This will just make surging it easier. It's still gonna be a little tricky to surge it because um, we don't have much seam allowance below the elastic, so. This is going together really smooth though.
I should have double checked my elastic circumference. Hopefully I didn't make it too big or too small, right? I think it's really interesting seeing what is sentimental for people like seeing my daughter sometimes be sentimental about something that is so mundane in the house, you know, and I'm, I love that. There we go. Here's my waistband. So um, I could also do the casing for the um, draw cord right now because I'm going to stitch down the middle. I probably should before I um, uh, surge it, right? Surge it on the pants. But I'm, I'm wondering, I want to do the chain stitch. Do you guys do that on your cover stitch? Do you do the just a single chain stitch on your cover stitch? When do you, where, which machine are you guys doing that on? Because my serger, this serger, I don't think would do that. I just like want like a, a single line. Of, like, you know how Libby says that she sews her muslins together with, uh, oh, I ran out of bobbin thread. Um, with her, is it her cover stitch? Help me out here. On the cover stitch. Okay, cool. And do you just uh, unthread one needle and that's it? That's all you have to do? My old machine just had a stitch for that, my old serger. <laughs> I've never tried it on my cover stitch. Huh, that'd be kind of cool. Should we do that? You know, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do the single needle. <laughs> There's a different setting. Yeah, let's see, that's how mine was too. Um, I think I'm gonna sew this again. And I'm going to push the waistband, the elastic up to the top. It's hard to believe I used to do this professionally, isn't it? <laughs> but I didn't do home machines with it. Okay. I'm going to... Now I'm just going to do another round along the bottom here. And I'm going to push the elastic to the top edge here. I'm also going to pull this draw cord because it's kind of buckled in there. I can see it right there. Oh, okay. Different needle position. I'll, have to, I'll experiment another time. I won't waste your guys' time with that just in case I don't get it quite right. This is when I'm like, maybe I shouldn't sell my old serger because then I could just set it up for stuff like that, right? Hi, Rachel. On the, oh, thank you for telling me that. That's all I have to do? Okay. You just take out a needle. That's great. That does sound really easy. Cool. How are you, Rachel? You just lurking today? Thanks for liking my comment um, under that post. You know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> I was, I was going, I was calling out a pattern company. <laughs> they didn't delete my comment. Yeah, mine's a four thread. I don't have a fancy, I went simple. Well, yeah, 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 it's four thread. That was a hard decision for me because I love the look of a five thread. <laughs> oh, good. Good, Rachel. I'm glad. <laughs> I have my presser foot on the elastic right now so that it's not getting kind of pushed out of the way. 
I'm not really worried about using my uh, single needle on this either because we're gonna surge it eventually. But you know, I'm just sewing it in flat. So technically, yeah, like this still stretches, right? I'm pulling really hard there. But the waistband is never going to stretch to the full uh, circumference of the fabric. And the elastic can only stretch as far as the fabric allows it. So there's certain kind of protections in place that way. Oh, you do, Diane. Okay, okay. <laughs> Kira. I'm just tacking it right now. It won't matter. But yeah, you, you don't need a serger to sew things. Your single needle does just fine. But no, it's a very unpopular opinion. This part right here didn't get done, so it's a little more finicky. But yeah, I mean, like if you if you didn't want to use a serger at all to sew knits, and you were maybe doing a certain part of it that was super super stretchy, you would probably want to stretch that seam. Like you could stretch the seam as you sew it, and then you would you would have built your stretch stitch into the spot. So. It's, I'm just making this look hard because I have to keep my presser foot on the elastic in there right here. So I'm keeping one leg of my presser foot on top of the elastic so that it doesn't get pushed away and I can keep sewing fairly close and somewhat straight. And I'm also trying my best not to nick the elastic because then it won't slide in there. You don't want to do that. Need to slide some of this on here. keep pulling it and then it pops off the elastic, which is fine. At least it means that for sure I haven't tacked the elastic in there. This is the uh, guaranteed way for things to go good. This is what we're doing right now. Normally I wouldn't have done any, I would have done all of this in one go. I would have put the, <laughs> I used to put the elastic in, the draw cord in, fold the um, ribbing, maybe clip it in, in those four places and I would go straight to the serger. I would do all this at one time, but let's just make this like nice and easy. Look at this, we're already getting that kind of nice effect on the waist. That's, that's the draw cord in there. It's really long. I don't know why it's so long. Let's try and get these gathers a little bit more distributed but it will distribute once we get it on the um, garment. All right, cool, and my elastic is still all loose in there, which is good. We want to make sure we didn't nick it. It looks good though, look at that, right? Someday, Eliza, do you sew a lot of knits, Eliza? I feel like you do. All right. Do I want to do my um, casing for the drawstring right now? This one's gonna be harder. So we're going to, I know what we can do. We could put this draw cord right in the middle and pin it down. Or we could take the draw cord out, sew the casing and then put the draw cord back in. That's probably the way to do it. Let's do it. We'll just suffer through putting the draw cord back in there. Sometimes you just gotta do what works better. Okay, so let's give ourselves some, uh, some guides here. 
because what I end up doing a lot of times is I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna put my start stop right here at the center. I'll do it at the side seam. And then I do the casing slightly smaller than my um, width of my buttonholes. So we'll do this five eighths and then it's one and seven eighths from the edge is the top edge or more like two inches, two inches, maybe two and an eighth. You can't find a good used serger? I'm surprised. Hi, Sydney. What are you up to? When's your sister's wedding? Your um, shrug you made turned out really great. Oh, that's a that's a that's a good way to go, Diane. Yeah, like the end of the year type of thing. All right, um, and then we'll put this one. Like one and three eighths. This is the most measured I think I've been in on something I've sewn here in so long. <laughs> I gotta make this stream last long enough, right? So in March, um, I already asked the guild for, and I got a few replies already. Thanks you guys. Um, I think I'm going to take part in the challenge that Yorkshire sewing, Yorkshire sew girl and, um, frugalissima put on every year. And it's a, sew a pattern from your, so sew a free pattern with fabric from your stash. And um, you can draft the pattern too. So I was looking for some ideas for patterns. My idea was to draft a knit camisole using fold over elastic. All right, so this time I am going to stretch this while I go. So when you do stuff like this, when you stretch and sew, I can't stress this enough. When you're stretching this like this, hold it, do not let it, like if you let it, um, shrink back, that's fine. But if you notice you've shrink, shrunken back and then you need to stretch it again, stop the machine before you do that. Because this is exactly when you can break your needle or you bend it and you don't know you've bent it and then it hits things underneath a little bit which knocks other stuff out of the way um, and changes your timing. So you want to stretch this out like this. Go as far as you can. Let go. Needle down. <laughs> stretch again like that yeah I think the camisole idea feels like it's the time of year where I could use a few more I saw Shem saying what about the tuck blouse I think the tuck blouse is a little too difficult and um, I will do that I'm thinking in May it's when it's going to happen because that's my birthday month and I'll be more insistent I do something I want for that month. But <clears throat> I also have a few designs that I've been wanting to do just in general. This is the easiest this has ever gone because I've taken so long to do it. I've done this in so many steps. <laughs>
Ooh, this looks better than any one I've done before. I have to make sure I can, uh, I think I can. I think I can get a, um, a uh, what you call it, safety pin through there. Okay, again. I should have done this so that was on that side. Sorry, it's in your way. The honey blouse. I don't know which one that is, but we can look at it. How, how soon are you making it? Because we could talk about it <coughs> during a Ask a Sewing Question show, even though it's not a new pattern. I don't mind discussing something like that. That'd be perfect. Pretty good, that's the side seam. Not bad, not bad. This little fabric in here, making it not uh, gather up as much, but the draw cord will cover that up. This one little flary spot, I'm just gonna fix it <laughs> where my bobbin ran out. <laughs> All right, let's set up the serger. Let me look at that pattern really quick too. I lost my mouse, here we go. Oh, that's cute, Eliza. I'll put a link in chat for you all. Oh, before summer. Okay. We, we like that timeline. <laughs> That's very cute. It looks uh, short, not in a bad way, but just be aware that it's short um, in length. How would I attach it with that one? Uh, same way I just did. You know, knits don't unravel. You don't actually have to finish them. So you could just do what I just did. You know, when this goes on to the, the pants, um, the pants are one-to-one -one with this, meaning the pants aren't larger or smaller than this piece here. When you, <clears throat> when you do a, a waistband like that and you're attaching it, they need to be the same unless the waistband stretches to fit your pants um, or skirt or whatever you're doing. So, and if it does, then you just need to stretch it on when you sew, just like I did, just that did that, like I stretch, sew, stretch, sew, like that. Uh, that's, that's fine, it'll work. I mean, obviously, look at this. I'm gonna pull it really hard. So, yeah, the only strain I'll probably get is right here along this edge, which I don't care about because I didn't uh, sew this with a stretch, like with stretch in mind, right here along this tacking edge. So like, if I pull it really hard, I, I would probably hear some popping, but I, my waist isn't this big, and I wouldn't put a waistband on me if my waist was this big, my waistband would be larger, right? So, yeah, okay. Let's move our camera over here. The light is so nice over here. All right, look away if you get seasick. I'm wearing my Merriam trousers for the first time today. They're just, I think what I realize is that they're just big. And by being so, they hang low but they're really comfortable. <laughs> All right. I can't see chat over here, but I could put my um, stream up over here. 
with my chat. That's what I need now. Who puts ads on their channel? I'm so greedy. All right, how's this look here? All right, so I'm gonna sew this inseam. I keep saying side seam, but what I mean is inseam. So we're gonna sew this inseam here. We're pretty much almost done with these now. We just need to do the inseam, the waistband to the seam, or to the waist. And then uh, I need to sew my petal hem, and that's it, and, and insert my draw cord. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I, I'm really happy with them. I think I would just make a, I think what I would do, to be honest, is make a, a shorter size in crotch length. Kind of like what I did with the Mitchells. I have to say, I'm really used to wearing jeans and jeans are tighter, you know, even in my stretch jeans, they are tighter. So that's what made me go, you know, you just need to get used to this. So. Right here. Sometimes you gotta get this gear going the other way again because it was going the other way and now I'm making it go that way. Oh, I should have done my little, my little serger tail trick. <laughs> I'm getting so good at it. All right. I did. I even compared them to the Mitchells. Hi, Leah. How's it going? I even compared them to the Mitchells. I analyzed them. I, yeah. <laughs> and you just sometimes, like, it could be a fabric thing. Um, I don't know. Trying to sync up with my tacked seam here. How's the serger camera? What do you guys think? I know my, my head is over here. Hi, Marlies, how's it going? Just checking my, or the, lining up my crotch. I feel like I'm being more true with the seam allowance on the inseam than I was on the outseam. I didn't trim this much off on the outseam. And I should have. Maybe if I had, it wouldn't have been so fussy to sneak under my needle. Oh, I forgot to do that again. Oh, well. Okay. Hi, Lindsay. How's it going? Slept in. <laughs> yeah, the lighting is over. Is good here, too. The window's right there, you know? All right. So, um... We need to do the, I just almost had to panic. So I was like, wait, I didn't put my, my pants together yet. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put the rise together. Can you imagine getting this far and all of a sudden you're like, wait, I have two right legs. <laughs> Watch that happen to me someday. 
most pants I don't assemble this way. I usually do the backs, then the fronts. I do the inseam and the outseams um, like that. Uh, this is probably a more comfortable way to do it where you do the rise all in one. All right, so we're gonna offset this inseam here. You're on your fifth test muslin working on figuring out. Oh, cool. Nice. You're plugging away at it. I love it, Leah. It's such an amazing experience working on a dress form. I really should be doing more to match my stripes and I think that's gonna be frustrating that I didn't, I forgot. Those stitch lines, not the stripes, but you know what I mean? Why did I, cause I had to, for the petal hems, I had to do the um, inseam last. I do the outseam first, in other words, in order to assemble the legs. This isn't an incorrect way to do it. Like I said, I think comfort wise, it's better to do the rise this way. So I, um, I turned down the latency of the stream today and it feels like we, you and I are not so far apart time wise. It's great. <laughs> are there still closed captions possible? Unavailable. How do you guys feel about that? Like I can make the stream more responsive. Meaning like there's less time when I say something and you hear it and then I see your reply. The problem is, is that you don't get closed captions while I'm live streaming. All right, so now we have our waistband to put on. Let's get a few clips. Yeah, you love less delay. Yeah, and I'd only not, I only went to low latency, not ultra low latency, but it definitely seems like it made a big difference. Cause you said, oh right, like pretty quick after I said that. Okay, so here is my front right here. And so I'm gonna put this right sides together to that center front seam. Right there. Okay, and then it's the center back seam. Uh, I need to probably flip over to my machine and, and put my labels on though. I don't wanna forget those. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Mullen. I, I wanted to experiment like if the closed captions still showed up and they are not showing up for me. And then I'm gonna make sure that they show up in the replay. If they don't show up in the replay, it deals off. We're putting it back to um, normal latency. Okay. Um, I'm going to pop over to my machine here and just put some labels on. I was thinking I'm going to use this as my, wait, um, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm like, I'm holding it up. How come you can't see it? I'm going to use my little machine, but I'm going to put this can't stop. <laughs> at the bottom of it. I think I'm gonna stitch all the way around, but I don't have um, white thread on. Hmm. Maybe what I'll do is just uh, tack it into the waistband and then I'm gonna do it after I 
do this. Okay, so we're just gonna we're just gonna put it back here on the waist. That's all. Right? Is that what I want? Just trying to decide like Okay. I could have put this in this seam here, but I'm gonna put it like this and I'm gonna top stitch it down like this. All the way around the perimeter is my plan. So the 5 8 inch seam is like way down here, you know? So I'm just gonna tack that and then I'm gonna just awkwardly top stitch it afterward. Hopefully, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> darts can go wherever you need them to go or you can get rid of them. Like some people don't need darts at all. And it's like the, the biggest thing they can do is just delete the dart, <laughs> you know? All right, so we're gonna start at the back here. I remember my waistband matches my pant one to one. So even though it's scrunched up right now, if I were to unscrunch it, we would see that it, it should match. So, or close. I'm gonna try and Go all the way up to my top stitching there. So this is another one. If you have to stretch and you're at the serger, you be really careful. Stretch, then sew. I'm not catching my elastic in. I'm just trying to get my seam close to that bottom tacking. Hi, Amy, how's it going? Are all your soccer games done for the day? <laughs> I know what you're doing. <laughs> I was watching a video this morning the kind of YouTube videos I watch are about YouTube. <laughs> and so I was watching one of those this morning and I was in the bathroom, just like, whatever, doing my hair and stuff. And my husband scared me. Like he walked in and scared me. He never does that. He just did, he didn't mean to. And he was like, you're, I was like, dang it. <laughs> you're so stealthy, he's like a cat. And, um, he said, no, your, your video is just loud. I'm like, my video is not loud. I can hear your game over my video. <laughs> so yeah, this looks like, oh no, it's not, it's not stretching. It looks like it's stretching. There's just more elastic back here. The pocket is th very thick because I use the, the self for the pocket. So this is gonna be a little dicey here. I probably should have tacked this first on my machine so that it would be a little more compressed with the, the sewing. So. so we're being careful here. Only Liverpool. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn, welcome, welcome. It's, it's less of a, I, I'm just being chatty today. I'll just warn you. Less of a how-to. We're almost done too. See, so this edge is flat, right? I'm just making the waistband match it. It's scrunched up, but it's not um, at the edge. Okay, 
Okay, here we are back at another thick pocket. It's handling it like a champ though, thankfully. Should have like trued up my edge here because it was a little uneven there. It would be a little bit easier to sew. didn't turn out too bad. I was kind of worried it would be worse than that. All right. All right, let's go back to the regular machine. Clean all this up. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking about our waffle iron and how we have had it since, you know, Cricut was little. And it'd be a shame if that was a, a sentimental thing because it's just not a very high quality waffle iron. <laughs> That's why you buy high quality things sometimes is so that you get a, um, you, you get, what is that? Oh, that's my jacket. Um, you get, you know, a, a better thing that'll last forever if it's sentimental. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna secure this tail and it's gonna go like this. See, that's why I knew I didn't wanna put it there. Because the waistband seam wants to go down. I knew it, I knew something about this. I was like, this isn't where I wanna do. Yeah. When you're just sewing one, this is when you're troubleshooting everything. But I'm only ever gonna sew one. So, okay. My span looks pretty good though. You can see my seam in places. Like I could probably get that better, especially in this area where it got really thick. Oh, we lost the camera. I think because I just yoinked it. Oh, dang it. Dang it, I shouldn't have did, did that. There we go, I see it, I got it. Sorry. No, don't do that. Oh, really, Rachel? That says a lot. Even if their if their best one even wasn't that great. I love the way they do their reviews. <laughs> Okay, let's check out my pants and we'll do our petal hems now and we'll, then we'll put our draw cord in there. Waistband seems a little big, but we have this draw cord. See, I could choke this up a little bit more, so I'm going to. Why not? I'm like trying to, I, I've been, I was like sewing it like it's gonna be a, you know, production. Yeah, this fabric is really cool. Um, there's a link in the description, Eliza. It's not an affiliate link or anything, but um, the, uh, Checking out what other people made in this fabric in the other colors is really cool. Like I'm like, oh, I really wish I would have picked a more fun color. There's like a mustard color that I loved. 
it looks kind of antique almost. There's just something about it that looks really cool. And you could just make like a little sweatshirt, you know? Yeah, I'm just like uh, making the waistband seem a little more even. I shouldn't even be doing this. I should just do this off camera, but it'll look nicer. <laughs> yeah, check out the other colors, Eliza. There's a lot of them. There's like eight colors. This I probably should have stretched a little more than what I'm doing right now. Nope, move this out of the way. It was a little hard to get my serger really close to that stitching where I enclosed the elastic. And that's because <clears throat> that ridge of your elastic is gonna push your presser foot around. See how it looks better? Look at that. Mm -hmm. Presto flip side Belgian waffle maker and warming. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So then here we need to do this little, here, let's um, secure this tail. Actually, let's secure it on top here because we're about to underlap it. And then let's do the other one, do it on top. Okay. <laughs> right, Rachel, I know, huh? They're so funny. <laughs> so we figured out I can do this, right? Yeah, 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 okay. There's my chalk right there. Yeah, and we're gonna top stitch it and then it goes to there, close, close. So basically, oh, I missed. Um, we're going to just top stitch this under this binding edge here. This is such a home sew thing. You never do this in production. And then this right here. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. I feel like I want to I want to poke it past that edge a little more because I'm sewing it from this side. You know, did, last time did I did pin it from this side, didn't I? And I just sewed over the pins. I think that's what I did. So we'll do that just so we make sure we catch it. Got a little bubble right there. Okay. Okay. Do this one here. I don't really want it to go too far past the edge. Well, maybe I'll just hold this one because I don't want it to, um, I just don't want that edge to be on the inside. Oh my gosh, these pins. It's like sometimes, look at this, I can't push the pin through. <laughs> Jeez. Should have probably turned this inside out.
You can't sew pins on your newest machine. How come? Looks pretty cute. <laughs> exactly, Eliza. We'll wait. <laughs> All right, and then this one here goes here. Dang, I love the lower latency. Do you guys use closed captions? I do. I use them on most videos unless it's covering up something of the um, video. <clears throat> I lost, oh, there it is right there. I did chalk it. I didn't think I did. <laughs> Thought I forgot one side. A lot of times I watch videos on mute. I think that's why I like them. The, on this one, Leah, I spent, since I, I learned on my Tamarack jacket that that one, you know, like when you see it on the form, it's pretty much hidden. You know, like you can't really see the pedal hem unless I turn, right? On this one, I engineered it so that it's gonna fall straight on the front leg, so it's very um, visible. Oh, you're afraid to mess it up. Oh, okay. It's still your new baby. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, Rachel. Look at all these pins. Who said I said I don't use pins? <laughs> These things feel like I'm going to be wearing a sleeping bag. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if um, they'll be the sexiest piece of clothing in my wardrobe. <laughs> but my husband has said I look sexy no matter what. <laughs> He's never said that. But <laughs> I, I think he believes it, though. All right, um, cozy was the goal on this one, right? Cozy, and I think I have achieved cozy. All right, so should we get a, a little look at them? Let's see. Bar. Oh, sorry, I just pushed my chair over by accident. Yeah, see how the pedal hems show at the front? Way more effective, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think they look really good. Let's put the uh, waist, the um, draw cord in. It's been so hard not to take the jacket home. Oh yeah, Amy, exactly. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, we're not really at the stage where we can pay to have our <laughs> subtitles made, you know? Because I have occasionally, it's actually not bad. I will say it's actually pretty good. <laughs> There's a link in the description. You can find the fabric there, Kira. And uh, two days ago, I showed you how to draft these. <laughs> so you're set. <laughs> yeah, I'm all in, right? I think it does. I was just thinking last night because it's been cold here, you know, like 32 in the, in the, at night. So when I take the dogs out at night, I'm like, oh, um, 
You guys need to hurry. <laughs> Oh, right, Kara, exactly. You can just use the, all I did was use the closet core pajama pattern. You don't have to do the petal hems. You can, you can sew these exactly how the closet core pajama bottoms are. You can just get that pattern. Look at me helping closet core out. I had someone in my one of my videos. Um, I couldn't tell what the comment was. I was like, they it was on a pattern that has a collar stand type of neckline. So, um, oh, side seam. Oh, we got it. Um, and their comment was, the pattern doesn't tell you to clip the neck. My, I had a lot left over and I was trying to be like, okay, are you saying that you don't like how I did it and my method steered you wrong? Are you saying that um, the pattern is incorrect? I mean, if you think the pattern's incorrect, you'd go to the pattern company, right? Not me. I don't know. Oh, you know, one of the things I should tell you with the Spanish snap is that one way you can also, uh, when you do the sewing of it, you can sew around that little piece of fabric I put at the back to kind of uh, uh, secure it all the way around so it's nice and flat. I, I didn't need to do that because I knew it was getting caught in the waistband. It's not a problem, so. Would I cut off the hem on the jacket sleeves and reposition it? No. Oh, um, like, do I think it, I don't think they're bad. Like they, they are made the way a petal hem would be. I just wanted to feature it more. You know what I mean? So look how cute it is with the weight, the little draw cord. Um, look how much draw cord I thought I needed. <laughs> I think like, I don't have the fabric in the sleeve in order to, cause like what you're suggesting is um, just shorten it and by shortening it, I could maybe reposition that pedal to be more prominently featured. I don't have the fabric in the right places on it to do that. Because remember there's that little hook in the, in the pattern. And when I shorten it, I would be cutting off that hook and it would just be like a straight sleeve I love a long draw cord so you don't lose it in the laundry. So I think like right there is where I'm gonna leave it, just like that. Plus it looks kind of cute. Yeah, you probably own it. <laughs> Maybe you do. I'm just gonna knot these. Simple sometimes is great, right? So what's left? It's just securing my label, right? Is the last thing. Which I was gonna sew around and stitch it down so I could have this little tab there like that. Hmm. Cause right now it doesn't look good. I could just take this off and leave it like that too. <laughs> Then I'd be done. Oh, I can't wait to try these. Here's the petal hem. See how that comes across on the front? I think that this is a better way to do this. Whereas on the jacket, Oh, well, I know if it's, right now it's not cinched. 
So if anything, it's gonna get longer. That's how I, that's how I know. And I actually happen to know that it is 12 inches <laughs> is the amount you need to do a bow tie. So you need 12 inches on each strand to do a bow tie. So when you do this, well, if you were gonna tie it like this and then this and this like that, That's just some random bit of information I know, and I don't even know it from sewing. I just know it because of packaging up orders. So like this one, the um, sleeve, it's on the back side here. So the center of the sleeve looks like this, and but this is the front of my arm right here. So that, this is why I thought, of, this is why I changed it. Yeah, well, it took me months, Shem. Yeah, I will, Amy. That's the, that's the stipulation. That's what I have to do. Um, it took me months, and I should have looked at other people's use of this fabric for inspiration because there's some really cute things on there. We should just check them out. Let's just check them out. I think I can find it pretty easily. Let's see. Um, I have to go to my video and get to the link, I think. Let's see. I also can't show you, like I can't let you see my um, video list by accident anymore because there's videos in there you don't know about yet. Okay. Um, Here we go. Hello. Oh yeah, my hair is funky today. The lighting, I'm not, I don't know you guys. This is, <laughs> okay, anyway. So look at all these colors it comes in, first of all. Why is this so big? This looks weird. Oh, she made a little dress. We'll pull over. I haven't even seen those two. Oh, that's kind of cool. He doesn't look thrilled though. Why is this so huge? I'm gonna refresh it. Okay, here we go. That was kind of uh, that was kind of crazy. I'm gonna just pop out the chat. Sorry. Okay, um, so I can see the chat. All right, here's his uh, pullover. Look at that green. That's nice, that's, the, that's what he's wearing, that green. Uh, did they say which green that was? That's the soft forest green. I'm on top. Oh, it switched when I went to um, um, pop out chat. Thanks. I had it on live chat, I promise. <laughs> now I know it's pop out chat doing that. Oh, so this, what is this? Did they use... Maybe this was just the inspiration. Um, it's fast, it's pretty fast. The long ties for the neck, like non-functional ties, like or like it's like a little tie. What I do is I just take something and I tie it and I measure it. And, and um, usually 12 inches, 12 inches on each side is gonna give you a nice bow. If you're doing something really small though, you can get away with less. That is that, but we can't, really can't see it. She made a skirt then. Here's a little pullover. I didn't see any of these. This is so interesting. There must be more pictures. So that was the dark blush rose. Oh, look, there's mine. <laughs> no pictures yet. Oh yeah, this was here. 
Yeah, so all those were posted after mine. So this little jacket, like that's very simple, a little bomber jacket. Um, and I think the shipping can be free, but I'm not sure, Amy, but it, it was very affordable. See, look at this color. I want this color, but I think this color wouldn't look good on me. I think this looks really cute. That's the LB pullover in tobacco. She did a full on like puffed. Is this a fiber mood? Wait, who is this again? Oh, this is Tilly in the Buttons. And then she just did a, a bigger sleeve, maybe. That was the navy blue. Here's this one again. This looks like the Tamarack, doesn't it? Dark Petrol. This color, I, oh, she lined it. I like, I like this color. I would have done, it looks like a light denim to me. Little sweatshirt again. See, something simple. The fabric speaks for itself. Oh, this looks like an eggplant color. This is cute. It's like a little hooded dress. Dark purple. Oh yeah, look at that, that dark purple. Oh, what's going on here? This is really interesting. Look at this. Wait, what's happening here? Oh, it's just, okay, so this is over her dress. She made a dicky. <laughs> I like that. A bib thing, she called it a bib thing. And look, it's cozy. I think that could be kind of cool underneath something. You wouldn't even know. There's that sweatshirt again. Oh, now this is kind of fun. Look at this, she made two things. She made, wait, she made a bomber jacket and the dress. I think the bomber jacket is great. No, it's a knit, Marilyn, it's quilted knit. <laughs> But this inside of it is finished, so it's not, you don't have to line it if you don't want. It's got just a scrim on the back. So she made a dress. Which ones did she do? This is the camel color. This looks warmer in this um, picture of the color, and it looks pinkish up here. I actually like both colors, so. I don't know what pattern she used, though. So. Oh, there's white. Oh, now I kind of like that. That's ivory. That looks, that's very cozy looking. It looks very snowy. Oh, another dress. So this, oh, she did. So that was a whole dress. Look at this dress is so cool. I like this dress. Did she make that? Like the, the drop dress drop dress. Who's the drop dress by? It's not tagged here. Hmm. Oh, interesting, Amy. Oh, see, this is cute. These little jackets. See, I, I would have gotten there faster if I just looked at the inspiration. I would have been like, oh yeah, jacket. <laughs> All right, well, and that was the, she did two colors, soft wash green and ginger. Is the fabric warm? It seems warm. It is not, uh, it's like a polyester. Polyester viscose lycra. So I, I wouldn't consider this like a, an outer layer weight though, you know, but for um, like walking around town, you know, I love this color, just this, this, this is, this is a good one. I just can't wear this color anymore, really. Cloud gray. It's heathered knit, basically. This is two different colors. All right, we're down at the bottom. You guys made it. <laughs> we'll go back here. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, it is helpful ideas. Like I should have done that so much longer ago, just gone to the site and see what people were doing. I, you know what, it's funny because I was very naive in thinking, oh, nobody will pick this fabric, it's too weird. I was wrong. 35% stretch in the width, 50% in the length. I don't 
know about that. That is not 35% in the width. There's no way that's 35% um, length, a little bit more. I mean, maybe, look at that. It doesn't stretch that much. It's pretty stable. That's why I decided to do pants and a jacket, so. All right, well, I'll be pic pi uh, doing pictures soon so you can see how it turned out. Hopefully the pants came out. <laughs> I feel like uh, it's gonna be one of those Christmas story moments and I'm gonna be sitting there with my arms up. <laughs> so I'm gonna need to push them down. <laughs> Yes, Shem, absolutely. I think it would be a really great lining in a coat because it's it's actually soft. Um, I think it would actually lend a little bit of warmth, not middle of winter where you live warmth, you know? So, oh, the tobacco's out of stock. Yeah, I meant to look at the, the, the um, colors that are... We, we really traveled a long way in this. Where are all the colors? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is 26 colors. Only the tobacco is out of stock though. All the others are in stock. Look at that, old gold. Very cool. Anyway, <laughs> whoops, restore chat. No, where'd my chat go? Oh darn it. Where's chat? It says, I said restore. There's no chat. There we are. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave the pop out because um, all the chat messages have disappeared. Oh, for your waxed canvas. It would certainly make the waxed canvas more cozy. See you, Terry. Oh, right, it's um, a Zaxby's day. <laughs> um, you're gonna try to finish off your baby colt, nice. All right, well, um, that concludes this. So next month uh, in March, I'm gonna be sewing the free, a free pattern for the first week. Would it bobble? Would it bobble? Do you mean pill? This could pill. I hope it doesn't, but it could, if that's what you mean. Um, and then I think the other project will be a either the cropped jacket by assembly line that Hearts gave me or this uh, tuck shirt by Maison Fauve, a French pattern company I've never sewn from before. So that's my, that's my plan for March. A little bit of drafting, a little bit of a uh, of a project, so. Is there three weeks? Actually, there might be three streaming weeks in March. Let's see. One, two, there are three streaming weeks in March. We get three projects. Cool, that's great. It's a long month. All right, well, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me while I do my little cozy, weird quilted project. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, why is the stream so far behind for me? Am I going to do undergarments still for undergarments? What did I say I'm going to do? Oh, you did, Diane. Nice. Yeah, Eliza, definitely. Do you mean, um, what do you mean, Kira? Which undergarments? Like the, the camisole. I'm thinking about doing the camisole the first week of March, if that's what you mean. I didn't plan on any underwear streams, though, or a bra or anything. But if I do a bra, I'm going to do it in August. That's my thinking, if that's what you're talking about. My stream is, like, stuck still. I don't know where you guys are, but it is... I am still looking at Minerva with you guys on my stream. That is crazy. That is, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Undergarments for drafting? I had some of the garments I had designed I was planning on doing. 
I could be misremembering what I said though, Kira. Uh, was it, um, do you remember what garment I said specifically? Like, yeah, the camisole. I, like, I don't think I would do like underwear because that's just, honestly, it's just so easy. Um, I've been thinking about doing some of the tops that I showed in that Vlogmas thing, but and then the camisole. Just remind me what I promised, so I do it. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for chilling with me this week. It was fun. Uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks for live streams, and, and in the guild, yeah, next week we have our skill building session all on um, seams, settings, and, oh, what is it? Stitches, seams, and settings. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, let me know what I promised. <laughs> um, so it's going to be all about, like, what's the right seam allowance for different seams, what thread, settings, thread tension, when you're using top stitching thread, like how to adjust those things, what are ideal threads. Um, it's a huge topic, so we're gonna try and do as much as possible. And that's the skill building session for Journey is the Master Group. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend too. I'll talk to you probably in the guild sometime, so bye.